Hi and welcome back to another video, also follow up for special M.2 coolers. We had a video about this several months ago with obscure cooling solutions. Sometimes you are wondering what they are thinking about making these designs and I think we have similar things again on this table. We have one cooler that has like, I'm not sure, like the branding is pretty obscure and a lot of RGB and something that looks pretty much like 50% of a CPU cooling unit. Same conditions and same test setup as last time. We have again our Corsair MP600, so a PCIe Gen 4 SSD. It's also the same setup, so the same C790 board with a 13600K. I mean, we don't need anything stronger for this kind of testing. And we are also running off iGPU simply, so we have more room here and no like airflow coming from the GPU to kind of disturb the testing. And we will start with this Longkinson cooler. Or should I maybe call it a cheap copy of Asus ROG and not even being able to copy the right font? I mean, the, the logo is correct, right? But why is the logo itself, like the ROG logo, not correct? Makes no sense. And we have a tiny interesting fan on there. I have the strong feeling that this is going to be next level garbage mount again. I mean, there's like a 0.5 millimeter thick aluminum plate in here. I also want to point out there is no manual included, so I have no clue how it's supposed to be mounted, but you can kind of like remove this aluminum plate. I don't know. And somehow you have to mount the SSD with two thermal pads in between. Great. Just adding the thermal pads. Well, I added the bottom thermal pad, then the SSD. Now trying to place the top one. It's pretty sticky, so that will make things a bit easier. But apart from that, I mean, I, I'm still left with this aluminum plate. And I still haven't figured out how I'm supposed to... This is complete garbage. Yeah, we have some great success here. I tried to press it down and then I cracked the acrylic part on top. Oops. Anyway. After reading some AliExpress reviews, I think this cooler is only made for like single-sided SSDs. That's why I cannot like really clip it in here. Anyway, still looking at the other reviews, there are some people who actually used this and from their review, it happened after a few hours that the SSD cooler just fell off because it's like slightly sticky pads, but not like adhesive pads. And I guess once they get warm, the SSD cooler will just fall apart. Yeah, that, that looks great. Okay, you have to check this out. I mean, here we have our 5 volt ARGB connector because this is supposed to be with RGB. Don't fall apart. Yes. This fan is spinning on standby power. The system is not even powered on. So, I mean, no matter what, it's not that loud, but I can still hear it. And I mean, who designs this? Like, <laughs> uh, but now we also have light. It's making some very strange noises. I'm not sure if the fan is damaged or if, if something is about to blow up. Okay, it's it's actually just a fan. So if I if I slow this down, the noise is gone. I was I was just like, don't die now. And I mean that's that's a great thing, right? It's uh, that's something you have to achieve, like bearing damage within thirty seconds. That that's pretty pretty good. Not bad. Similar to last time, we will just run three times nine loops of sequential read write crystal disk mark and then check out the drive temperature afterwards. To get a temperature reference, we will look at the MP600 without any cooling solution. This is the top blue line and as you can see, within less than a minute, you will reach a peak temperature above 70 degrees Celsius and it doesn't even take two minutes until you see throttling of performance. The yellow line is the Gigabyte Aros Master like integrated cooling solution of the motherboard and the cooling solution will perform extremely well, but you have to keep in mind that the mass of this is just enormous compared to any normal M.2 two cooler. That's why you can see this like very solid performance but you also have to keep in mind that it doesn't really have that much surface area and it will definitely rely on getting some airflow let's say from your graphics card which will sit on top. 
The Longkison M.2 cooler with active fan, and that is the brighter green line, will reach 70 degrees Celsius within 5 minutes, and that's with an active fan. Now if we decide to disable this fan, so basically pulling the plug, that is the darker green line. We will already see 70 degrees Celsius within 3 minutes. And I mean, that is a cooling solution with an integrated fan, like this is terrible cooling. And especially with the fan disabled, totally unusable, and if I think about the quality of the fan and the noise, yeah, not recommended. This could actually work. And the name is also great because it's called M.23, perfect. At least from the picture, it has a lot of surface area, it should have a decent fan, it will be screwed on from what I can see. That could actually work, but let's check out the product. There is no manual included, but apart from that, like first look quality is, is absolutely decent. Not sure about fan and like noise and everything, but quality wise not bad also we have three different sizes of thermal pads included so we can for sure also make use of like double-sided ssds kind of i mean it kind of looks like a cpu cooler right yeah i'm uh, honestly not quite sure what just happened but i mean the cpu so far it looks kind of all right it's sometimes throttling down to like 4g but most of the time looks like 4.9 to 5.1 that's not even too bad I mean, if you have this inside your system, like on your M.2 drive and like your air cooler suddenly fails, then no problem. You can use the tiniest CPU like tower cooler ever made. Like not even kidding. This is running load with the 13600K. Like the, the heat output behind is enormous. It's pretty solid temperature, but yeah. That's, that's pretty impressive. Also considering that I did not even clamp it down, like there is no mounting obviously, so I just applied a bit of cryonaut and pressed it on, and that's it. This SSD cooler is able to dissipate constantly 70 watt. Of course, I mean, we're seeing 100 degrees Celsius, fair enough. And it's down clocking, because we can see an average clock of like 4.2, but still, I mean, it's, it's, it's like an M.2 cooler. And on average we see 70 watt. That's not bad at all. That also worked quite smooth. Installing the M.2 drive was no problem at all. I mean for an M.2 drive it will cool quite well. I'm pretty sure about that but like yeah. Size wise it's definitely not a good option. I mean this is already blocking this PCIe slot. Couldn't put it like more in the back because then it would like block the GPU in the back and uh, yeah. Yeah not quite sure. As expected, the GeoShark just performs extremely well. And just for comparison reasons, in the previous video, the Elec Gear M.2 2280 was the strongest cooler in the test. And you can see it in here with the red line. But still, the GeoShark, and that is with the brighter blue line all the way on the bottom right here, will beat this, and by a good margin. And even under strong load, we will not see temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius. I mean, of course, it is a big cooling solution, but you will get a very decent performance. Going from an extreme overperformer to something that could be an extreme underperformer. At least, I mean, if I look at the picture, they're advertising excellent heat dissipation, but the amount of aluminium is kind of worrying, at least in ratio to like the plastic for like RGB. We have a manual included, that's good. Apart from that, we have different sized thermal pads, well, like different thickness for different types of SSDs, which is great. This is kind of the base plate. Still have to peel off this, this foil. Then we have the part which is essentially the heat sink, potentially. Could be a hot box because, I mean, it's not really a lot of surface area. And this is mainly for RGB, I guess. Assembly was indeed pretty smooth. Just the screws on the side, thermal pads, all pretty nice and easy. At least the light looks pretty decent, pretty even. I can't really use RGB right now. I don't have the Gigabyte software installed. I don't want to install it on this system, so yeah. But it's light and it's white. First look, the Glint by Gallet doesn't even perform so bad looking at the chart. That's going to be the orange line in the center. But I think this is just because this cooler has a rather high mass, especially compared to the other cooling solutions. But it just doesn't have any kind of surface area which you can see because at the end of the test, where it's getting warm, it will stay hot. 
I mean, this is a total hotbox because at the end of the test, you can see there is pretty much no cooldown curve. The last one for today is going to be the Yay, Yay, I don't know. It's pretty hard to pronounce that name. The Finns called M2 Radiator. And just judging by the image, this could be quite nice. We already have some pretty nice colored thermal pads in different thicknesses, so yeah. That already should make the cooler compatible to like all of the SSDs, I think. Just visually, this looks amazing. This is, I think this is the most beautiful M.2 cooler I saw so far, at least just for my subjective opinion, but it's like a nicely aluminum milled body and then some copper fins inside. That's pretty nice. Obviously with this kind of orientation and no airflow, it's probably not the best orientation because the fins are open to the side, but still, I mean, just everything was smooth, insulation, thermal pads, everything. I'm curious to see the temperatures. I was honestly surprised by the cooling performance of the fins cold, but in a negative way. Still, I think this is just a result of how we are testing these coolers. And that's because we don't have any kind of airflow. We're not testing inside a case. And I think with this very fine fin stack of the fins cold, you just have to rely on some kind of airflow, maybe generated by your GPU or something else. Because I'm pretty confident that if you have some kind of airflow, this cooler should perform much better than what we see here. So yeah, Lonkison, absolute garbage product. And I'm pretty sure that it's also not officially ROG certified or like pretty sure they don't have like the legal rights to print the ROG logo on there. Apart from that the ROG logo itself is not even correct, only this like ROG eye. And I mean, after 15 minutes, the fan breaking, that's a solid achievement. And also interesting that, I mean, if you look at this and you see that this is, like a cooler equipped with a fan, you think this should perform better than some of the like non-fan equipped versions, but it actually performed much worse than some of the coolers we saw last time without a fan. So yeah, that's pretty bad product. The Gelid, um, yeah, I'm not sure about this one. I mean, this is like, it gives you RGB if you want that on an M.2, but it has nothing to do with a cooler. It's, you basically attach RGB to an M.2 drive, but it doesn't have any kind of cooling capabilities. This one should have solid cooling capabilities, but not in our test scenario. I think the fin stack is just too fine for that. And it's also like the orientation and no airflow, but like theoretically, I think this is fine. The quality was pretty decent, but probably not for this type of test scenario. And this one, I have no clue who's going to use that. I mean, if you have a special test setup and if you're running like high load on your M.2 drive 24 seven for whatever reason, this will have very solid cooling. Like, I mean, it's basically a tiny CPU cooling block, as you could see, you can, you can cool a 13600K with it, like almost, almost reaching stock clocks. I'm waiting for one more of the like obscure M.2 cooling solutions, and then we will have another video with another four or five units, and then that should be it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.